What's going on guys? Just a quick video inside of Affinity Publisher talking about the data merge layout tool and why this can be such a great feature for certain projects. So inside of this tutorial, I'm gonna to put together a quick birthday invitation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna personalize that to have all of our guest names on them. So to get started, we just need to set up our canvas. And for this project, I'm gonna choose A4. So with that selected, I'll go ahead and just hit create. So inside of our interface, what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna make our way over to the left-hand side toolbar menu, and we're gonna select the data merge layout tool. So with that selected, we're just gonna drag from this top left-hand side all the way down to the bottom right-hand side, just to make sure we fill the entire canvas. So what you'll see right now is we have four different cells on our canvas. And the way that this works is right here on the top left-hand side, we have our parent cell. And anything that we put inside of our parent cell is gonna be copied automatically to all of the others. So just to demonstrate what I mean, I'll go and just grab a random shape and I'll just start drawing that inside of the parent cell. And you can see it just gets copied across the rest of these cells. So making sure that we do have our data merge layout tool selected, that then is gonna give us all of these options up here on the top context menu bar where we can add some more rows or columns. So right now we only have the four. However, you can go ahead and use the up and down arrows to add some more rows and get as many as you like in there, same as the columns. However, for this project, I'm gonna leave them on two on each one as I only need four of these. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna go over to the shapes on the left-hand side toolbar menu. I'll grab that rectangle and I'm just gonna drag this out to fill this entire cell right here on the left-hand side. And I'll just make sure I adjust that just to fit onto the canvas. Then I'm gonna give that a color. So I'll just go ahead and find maybe a blue that I like, something like that will be fine. I could always come back later and change the color if I'm not happy with it. But as you can see, what I'm creating here is being copied across all the rest of these cells. So with the background created, I'm gonna go ahead and just lock that inside of my layers to make sure I can't disturb it, as I'm gonna now start bringing some more things into here. So just to be a little bit quicker with this tutorial, inside of my assets panel, I've got a few different graphics that I'm going to use to put this design together. So I'll start just by dragging a few of these in. I'm just gonna resize that to make sure it fits inside of my cell. And as you can see, everything I put inside of the parent cell will get copied across all of the others. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line that up. Then I'll just start dragging some more of these little bits and pieces over. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger and just start putting the design together. Then I'll grab this right here. Once again, I'm gonna have to resize that as it's too big for the card. I'll go and move that into place. Somewhere down there will be perfectly fine. And I'll just continue by bringing in some more of these graphics. So I'll go and grab this envelope. Once again, I'll just resize that, just bring it down. And I can move all of these around once I start putting the design together. But for now, I'll just get them all onto the screen. And finally, I'm just gonna go and drag that Let's Party and I'll resize that as well. So you can see how it's all coming together. So I'll just go and put that over into place where I would like that to go. And you'll find you'll come back and start resizing all of your individual elements as you get through your design. But for now, we'll just quickly continue with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this group right here with all of these white outlines in the background. I just wanna drop the opacity on that just so it fades into the background a little bit have that maybe around 30%. That looks a little bit better in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do next is I wanna bring in a shape in this background, which is gonna hold a bit of text for the information about the party and where it can be located, etc. So I'll go back over to the left-hand side toolbar menu and I will grab myself a rounded rectangle and I'll just go ahead and just draw that into any size that I would like. So something like that will do for the moment. So it's something I want to point out quickly. What I'll do is I'm just going to put a stroke on this. So I'm going to go ahead and sample that color that we have right there for the stroke. Probably make that a little bit bigger as it's not very visible. So I'll make that maybe about 1.5 or two points. We'll come back and maybe change that later if we need to. And I'll go ahead and give that a color white. So what I want to point out quickly is you can see that we've now created this rectangle and it's not appeared on the rest of these. And the reason for that is it's because it's not inside of our data merge layout right here in our layers. So what we need to do is just drag and drop that inside. And now you can see it's been duplicated across the rest of those. So if you guys find that is happening to you, that will be the reason why. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that down in my layers to make sure it goes in the background. 
just so it hides behind the little guy that we have right here. And I'm just going to resize that just a little bit, just to make it fit the design a little bit better. And just drag that down slightly. I'm going to try and get a little bit more precise. Then what we need to do next is just bring in a little bit of text in here. So I'll go ahead and go back to the left hand side toolbar menu and I'll grab the frame text tool. Then it's just a case of just dragging out a text box and just filling out all of the text that you would like inside of here. So I'll do this really quick and pause the video so you guys don't have to see me fill this in and I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, so this is what we got right here, which is just a little bit of information about the party, such as what time it starts and finishes and what day, as well as the location of the party and whether or not you can make it by texting or calling that number. So what we need to do from here is we just got to change where it says to Matthew. We're going to change Matthew to make sure that it covers every single person on your birthday list. And the way that we're going to do that is by using data merge. And that is a really straightforward process. What we need to do in order to make that work is we need to have access to a spreadsheet software. For me, I use Microsoft Excel. So I'll just use Excel, but you guys are free to use any software that you like, whether you have Google Docs or Apple Pages. As long as you can export it as an Excel file, you are good to go. So all we need to do inside of here, first of all, I'm just going to make this cell a little bit bigger so we can see what we've got inside of here is we're just going to write in child's name. Then it's just a case of starting to add all of the children's names that are coming to the party, just in a list below all of these. Okay, so I paused the video so you guys didn't have to sit there and watch me write out all of these different random names. However, this is something similar to what you guys should have. You should just have your names total up here and number one and the list of all the people that are coming to the party. Once you've done that, all you have to do is go up to file. Then we're going to go down to save as and you'll give this a name and just save it onto your desktop. So I'll just go ahead and save this as book one on my desktop, but you guys are free to save yours anywhere that you would like. So once you've done that, go back to Affinity Publisher. Then what we need to do next is we're going to go up to the top menu bar to where it says window. Then we're going to select data merge manager. Inside of here, we need to navigate to this button that we have right here on the bottom right hand corner, which says add data merge source. Go ahead and just select that, then navigate to where you saved your file that you just created. So it's book one right there for me. So I'll go ahead and double tap just to import that. And now you can see it's inside of my data merge manager. Then I'm just going to choose this preview with record right there. And I'll go ahead and just close that. What we need to do next is we need to open up our fields tab. For me, I have that already available over here on the left hand side. For you guys, if you don't see this, what you need to do is go to Windows on the top menu bar, go down to where it says References and just make sure that you have your fields checked. Then you will also have access to this menu. So inside of our fields, you'll see just down here, we have this data merge section and you can see it right here is a file that we just created, which is book one. And there is a title that we made for our list, which was names. So if I go back into my Excel file, you can see names is right there and that is what that is referencing. So back inside Affinity Publisher, what we need to do now is we need to highlight the name that we want to change. So I'll go ahead and just highlight Matthew and right here where it says names, it says Lisa right there as that is the first name on my list. So I'll just go ahead and double tap on Lisa and you can see that has now changed to Lisa. And at the moment, it says the same thing across each one of those. However, when we come to generate all of these, it's going to change to all of the individual names on our list. However, before we go ahead and generate all of the different names, if you guys do plan on printing these at home, then one thing I do recommend that you do is just create yourself a cut line. So when you come to print this, you're going to know how to cut these out. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and grab the pen tool and we'll just find the center of the document and we'll just make a point at the top and at the bottom. Make sure our stroke is big enough so we can see it. So maybe around 0.2 will be perfectly fine. And what I'm going to do next is go into my stroke options. I'm going to make that a dotted line. Then if I just deselect that, we can see that we have this dotted line down there. That's a little bit too thick. So I'll go back into my stroke settings and I'll make that maybe one point instead. And then we'll see how that looks. So that doesn't look too bad. So we'll go and do the exact same thing from the left hand side to the right. So once again, we'll grab our pen tool, just mark a point right there over to the other side. Then we'll just go ahead and grab the move tool and we can see that now. 
So what's going to happen if we just go into a print preview, we can now see how this is going to look if we went to print it. And you can see we have these cut lines visible right here down the center and across the other side. And that's just going to make it a lot easier for you guys to cut these out with a pair of scissors or maybe using the guillotine, however you choose to cut these out. If you take these lines off, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to cut these out to be perfectly sized. So that's always something worth mentioning. So if you find that you don't want to use the lines, that's perfectly fine. Just go back over to your layers and either delete those or turn them off. Just keep in mind that if you do plan on printing these at home and you don't have your lines on them, it could make it just a little bit more difficult to cut these out perfectly. But that's personal preference whether you guys want to use those or you don't. So with that out of the way, what we're going to do now is just generate the list of all the different names on these invitations. And the way that we're going to do that is by going back up to the top menu bar inside a window. Then we're going to open up our data merge manager once again. Then all we need to do inside of here is we're going to hit this generate button. So we'll just go ahead and hit generate. That's going to open up a brand new project inside of Affinity Publisher. So I'll just go ahead and close that. So just over here on the left hand side is our original document we've been working on. And over here on the right hand side is a new project that Affinity has generated. And you can see right here it says to Hunter, to Sarah and to Michael. And you'll notice that we've got one missing right here. And the reason that has happened is because Michael is the last name on our list. So if we go ahead and just open up Excel, you can see right there at the bottom, Michael was the last person. So it's not generated any more invitations after Michael. However, if we start making our way up, you can now see we have four on each page and we have Maya, George, Jaden and Lucy. Keep making your way up and you can see all of the different names in our list on our invitations. So if we now go up to file and we hit print, you can now see we have all of the individual pages in here that we can just print off and cut these out. And these are going to have all of the different names inside of our list. So if you find that you may want to fill up this entire sheet and add an additional person or more people to your list, then all you have to do is update the Excel file. So if we go back into Excel and all we've got to do is just add another name on here. So we're putting maybe Sam. Just go ahead and save that. We'll go back into Affinity Publisher. Then what we need to do now is go back to the original file that we created as we need to now generate a new list of names. We'll go back up to Window once again, down to Data Merge Manager. What we need to do now is just hit the Update button as we've now added an additional name to our list. So go ahead and just hit update. Then we're just going to go and generate a new list of names for our invitations. Then once that's complete, we'll go ahead and just close data merge. And now you can see we have Sam at the bottom. So at the moment, we now have three different projects. We have our original over on the left hand side. We have the first set that we generated where we do not have Sam at the end. So we can now go ahead and close that one as we don't need it. And with our new one, we now have Sam on the end. So now you can see our entire sheet is full of names. So if we go back up to print once again, we can now see that every single one of our sheets are completely full with names. So just one more thing I want to mention. If you guys do want to print these at home, then I recommend that you print these borderless. So your design is going to go from edge to edge on your sheets of paper. And the way that you would do that is just by changing your paper size from A4 over to A4 borderless and just hitting print. And then what you see on the screen is what you will print. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, then please go ahead and hit that like button as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as I'm on a personal mission right now to hit 10,000 subscribers. And I'm not too far away from there at the moment. So you guys can really help me get there. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.